Welcome to First Lutheran's Wednesday, August 5th evening service. A few announcements. Services are on radio on Sunday morning at 8 a.m. on station WBEV. Services are also online and in-house at 8 a.m. and 10.30 a.m. Sunday mornings. Currently, masks are required for both. If you're coming to a service, please do call the church by Thursday noon so that you're registered to come. Also, Pastor Jim Went offers drive-by communion twice each month. Enter the semicircle driveway by the bells at the church on the corner of Mackey and Center Streets between 9 and 10.15 a.m. on the second and fourth Sundays. Pastor will await you with a blessing and communion. If, like so many, you have dearly missed receiving communion, pastor is happy to serve you this way. Also important is the reminder to call the church with a prayer request if someone you know needs prayer. The prayer team is ready, willing, and able to add our prayers to yours. We are blessed these days of pandemic to have radios, TV, iPhones, email, devotionals, all sorts of methods of communication to be in touch with one another. Of course, we don't require any of the above for us to be in touch with God. And most of us have Bibles, which tells us about God's presence on earth. Reading it gives you strength, comfort, and insight, and fills you with wonder at what God's people have already been through lived through. We begin our service in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And let us confess our sins in the presence of God and of one another. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. To the glory of your holy name. Amen. God, who is rich in mercy, loved us even when we were dead in sin and made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved in the name of Jesus Christ. Your sins are forgiven. Almighty God, strengthen you with power through the Holy Spirit, that Christ may live in your hearts through faith. Our prayer of the day, O oh God, our defender, storms rage around and within us and cause us to be afraid. Rescue your people from despair, deliver your sons and daughters from fear, and preserve us in the faith of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord and Savior. Amen. There are two readings to share with you this evening. The first is from Psalm 85, verse 8. 
I will listen to what the Lord God is saying. I will listen to what the Lord God is saying. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel for this 19th week after Pentecost is the New Testament reading from Matthew 14, verses 22 through 33. Glory to you, O Lord. Immediately, Jesus made the disciples get into the boat and go on ahead to the other side while he dismissed the crowds. And after he had dismissed the crowds, he went up to the mountain by himself to pray. When evening came, he was there alone. But by this time, the boat, battered by the waves, was far from the land, for the wind was against them. And early in the morning, he came walking toward them on the sea. But when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were terrified, saying, it's a ghost, and they cried out in fear. But immediately Jesus spoke to them and said, take heart, it is I, do not be afraid. Peter answered him, Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you on the water. He said, come. So Peter got out of the boat, started walking on the water, and came toward Jesus. But when he noticed the strong wind, he became frightened, and beginning to sink, he cried out, Lord, save me. Jesus immediately reached out his hand and caught him, saying to him, You of little faith, why did you doubt? When they got into the boat, the wind ceased, and those in the boat worshipped him, saying, Truly, you are the Son of God. Praise to you, O Christ. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be pleasing in your sight, O Lord, my strength and my Redeemer. Our readings are very apt in these days, yes. Illness and sometimes death as consequences of careless behavior. Long-term effects if an ill person survives. Unseen yet menacing, this virus has changed our, way, our lives in ways we've never imagined. We have heard of the great flu epidemic of 1918, but really had no idea how life was then. It killed so many. Now we're experiencing it ourselves. Does life sometimes feel like the Old Testament days to you? Job would feel at home here and now, wouldn't he? He was cursed with all sorts of plagues. I know biblical scholar believe me my understanding is not deep i do think of the old testament as being of promise i think of the new testament as being fulfillment god's son actually came to our earth he was born of mary he taught in the temple he turned water into wine he recruited disciples he performed miracles he presented himself as the bread of life. By doing all these things, he challenged the powers that were in his that were in his day. And we know what happened to him. Like us, he died. Not a peaceful death, not a private or quiet one either. Also, like some of these days, and throughout all time there was one huge, breathtaking difference. He was dead, he was buried, and he, yet he wasn't there in that tomb when Mary went to see him. The tomb was open, he had risen, he was dead no more, not ever. He made himself known to his disciples soon thereafter, even to doubting Thomas, remember? 
he challenged Thomas to put his fingers in Jesus' side where he had been brutalized yet again as part of his crucifixion. We know all these things, we who were fortunate enough to grow up with Sunday school and vacation Bible school and confirmation. We've heard these stories about Jesus. Sometimes we take them for granted, don't we? They are background in our lives. Yet in these days of pandemic, these days of needless deaths by violence, by angry voices, each saying the other is a liar and worse, noise going on all over the place. This pandemic, it's an absolute blessing to remember how much our God loves us. You don't think so? Why else would he send his son, Jesus Christ our Lord, to live among us, to teach us, to model for us how to live in this world God created. We may not like all the teachings, the examples we were given. For example, to forgive and love one another, even when the other was ugly and mean to us. But that's not God's problem. It's ours. We talk about tough love. Well, it was practiced first by God our Father. Jesus really could walk on water. That was, to us even today, a miracle. It terrified our, his disciples. It would us. Out in the middle of a lake with strong winds blowing, and here comes someone or something wafting along on the water toward us. What? We use the expression, he thinks he walks on water, or she walks on water, to put down a braggart, someone who is arrogant, acts better than you or I, a smarty pants. It's not a complimentary expression at all, but we all know the origin of that description. It's from our Jesus who really did walk on water. God's son. Matthew, Mark, and Luke all write about this. And Matthew also writes that Peter wanted to walk on water and asked Jesus if he could. And Jesus said, yes, come. Jesus took a few steps, but then wavered. Can't you hear him question himself? And he started to sink. Jesus caught him and reprove, reproved him for his lack of faith. We've heard that expression too. O oh, ye of little faith, believe in the Packers, believe in the Beavers or whomever. O oh, ye of little faith, we say when someone doubts a team we follow and love. We use it the same way Jesus did in a scolding sort of way. Believe, have faith. That's what we're saying to our friends who doubt. That's what Jesus was saying to Peter as he doubted. What are we to learn from this particular story? That we too need to keep our faith. And not just to keep it, but cherish it. Be grateful for all those stories of Jesus and his miracles. These days of pandemic, we are all challenged beyond anything we've ever known. Our whole country, the whole world, is in the same boat, at the mercy of a virus, something we can't even see. Remember, Peter doubted and started to sink in the water. Who helped him? Who saved him, even though Peter's faith faltered? These are days of faltering for many, many of us. But Jesus' hand is out, stretched out to us in love, giving us life. We know something else too. We who have faith in our Redeemer may know that a virus may destroy us or someone we love, but to fear that is not necessary. 
deal with it? Yes. Wear a mask, wash hands, stay home if possible. Listen to the scientists. We are intelligent people, but we worship a God who loves us beyond all understanding, who sent a son to us to show us how to live, to teach us how to love, to even tell us that death on earth is not the end. Jesus rose again. Jesus rose again. We will too. Risk. Risk all, said Jesus to Peter, attempting to walk on water. Believe in me, said Jesus. Hold tight and strong. I'm here. I'm the one you can rely on into eternity. Amen. Our prayers of intercession. Lord, we remember all who are ill or dying from this virus. Lord, we ask for healing. We remember all who mourn the ill, the dying, the dead from this virus. We ask for comfort. We remember all who are hungry, Lord, and ask for food for them all. We remember all who are without work, Lord, and ask for jobs that house and feed them and their families. We remember all the quarreling of our leaders, Lord, local, state, nation, and ask that they be stilled, speaking only in your righteousness, not theirs. We remember all who falter in their faith, Lord, and ask that they be strengthened to resume making our town, city, county, state a better place to live and raise children. We remember you, Lord, and ask that you hear us in all our prayers, spoken and unspoken. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Please join me in lifting up the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the glory and the power forever and ever. Amen. And now, please receive the benediction. May the Lord bless and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and grant you his peace. And now, go in peace to love and serve the Lord. <laughs>